Hey, Alive Church family and friends, I am so glad to see you right now uh, tuning in. I just wanted to take a minute and just kind of clarify some things, kind of let you know where we're at as a church, talk about the coronavirus a little bit, and uh, trying to just catch us all up together. So as you know, the COVID-19 virus is freaking people out right now. It's scaring people. And I want you to know, first off, that God is with us. Surely he knew that this was coming and he has a plan. And that plan is to take care of you, his children, and it's going to be all right. We're going to get through this. So let's just be calm, amen, and, and not fearful. Uh, I want to talk about our church for a minute and some of the plans we have coming up. We have been listening to the CDC. We've been listening to uh, government agencies, our president, and they have asked that you not meet in groups larger than 10. Well, all of our groups at our church are larger than 10. So we are not going to be a church that bucks the system and rebels against our government and says, we're going to meet anyways. It's not a question of our faith. We have great faith. What it is, is we as the children of God are going to set the example. We're going to cooperate with our government. We believe that it would be very unloving for people to come to a live church and spread a disease. And so we believe in order to demonstrate to our neighborhood that we love them, we want to help quell and stop this disease and this virus. And so we have made a decision not to have church gathered together necessarily this coming Sunday, but instead we are excited to say we're going to have church in home through an online service. We're going to have worship, the preaching of the word. We're going to have some children's church ministry, all those kinds of things available to you at 10 o'clock Sunday morning. And you're going to get with your family and friends in your home and you're going to worship the Lord together and you're going to sing along and uh, you're going to hear the preaching of the word and be ministered to. And anyone that wants to participate can. We're going to be doing it on Facebook. We're going to be doing it on Instagram. We're going to be, uh, th that video is going to be on our website, alivechurch.tv. And the video is going to be on YouTube as well. We're going to use those four platforms to release that video. So surely you have access to one of those. And then uh, we've also made a decision just for now, for this week at least, that we're not going to have our life groups and we're not going to have our youth service. Uh, we want you to be safe. We want you to be at home. We have faith in the Lord our God, but we believe it's best just to comply right now and do what's being asked of us, not to rebel. That's not going to accomplish anything. It doesn't make us a better Christian. Um, it, 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 it might enable the virus to spread, and we're not going to tolerate that. So um, that's coming up. It's going to be good. I also wanted to just give you an encouraging thought before we get off here, and that is I'm going to take the menorah, which represents in the tabernacle, and it represents in the, um, the, uh, the temple. It was in the holy place. The menorah was this giant candlestick made of solid gold, and it had seven lampstands connected into one. And those seven things reflect the, the, just the, the perfection of God, the completion of God, like the rainbow or like the week seven is the number of completion. And so, but in the temple, it offered light. And this light was not to be studied with. This light was to be admired and to be enjoyed. And that light represents the direction and the sight of God. And so... Uh, the, the Bible uses the menorah to teach us about the Spirit of God, and so I'm going to use that because it has seven different lamps, uh, 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 candle uh, sticks in it. And so we're going to take the Spirit of the Lord, seven parts of the Spirit of the Lord, just for a few minutes, and we're going to talk about that and why we need the Spirit of the Lord during this time and what God would give you and give me. And so the scripture that we're going to use right now is Isaiah chapter 11, verse 2. Isaiah 11, 2, and it says, And the Spirit of the Lord will rest on him. How many need some rest right now from the, and want the Spirit of the Lord to rest on you? And it says, it goes on, and it says, The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. We're going to take those seven things and we're going to break it down over a couple minutes here. And so the first thing is the spirit of the Lord or the spirit of intimacy. I want you to picture those seven candlesticks and one in the middle holding it up. 
and being the strongest one. And the strongest one, the thing that we begin with is intimacy. And during this time when you're not busy, you're not, you know, the kids are home and all that kind of stuff, let this be a time and a season where you become very intimate with the Lord. You draw close to Him. You begin to get in His Word. Not just watching Netflix, guys. Getting in the Word, worshiping, put spirit, put worship on in your house, and let your family draw close to God and become more and more intimate with God. How many know that would be good for you and I right now? And so intimacy and through worship and the word. And number two, the, the second thing in this in the menorah that we're going to talk about is the spirit of wisdom or the spirit of order. And wisdom is the ability to take complex things like the things that this world is going through right now and make them simple. The ability to think, take things that are out of order and put them in order. And the spirit of the Lord allows you and I to do that. And I want you to have the faith to know that you can take these complex things and they can become simple to you. And you can put your life in order right now by the Spirit of God. Amen. The next one is the spirit of understanding or vision. The Bible talks about the men of Issachar. They had the understanding of the time that they lived in. They understood what was going on. They knew how to plan and prepare. And the Spirit of the Lord can reveal to you and give you understanding about how to plan and prepare right now without panicking without being fearful. For God has not given us a spirit of fear. You're not going to find that in these seven things. Amen. And so the ability to uh, just to understand. Okay, and then the next one would be the spirit of counsel. I'm just taking them in order. Or the ability to make decisions. Right now, the spirit of the Lord, through the spirit of counsel, which is the Lord's spirit, can help you to make every decision you need to make. And you don't have to fret and worry about anything. The Lord, the spirit of counsel can come upon you in the name of Jesus and help you to make these decisions. Amen. That way you know what's real and what's not real. Number five would be the spirit of might or the spirit of strength. And so it's divine energy. See, we're not fearful. We're not shrinking back and getting fearful. No, the children of God through the spirit of God have the spirit of might. We have the spirit of might on our hands. You know, Jesus was called the Lion of Judah. Amen? Not the fearful, timid lion that had no heart like in the Wizard of Oz, but he was the Lion of Judah, and that's supposed to be on the children of God. We're not shrinking back from this. We're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. Amen. And so your family's going to be okay. Your finances are going to be okay. God is going to take care of us. We're going to be bold as a lion. The next one is... Number six, the spirit of knowledge or know-how. Filled with the spirit of knowledge and know-how. There was a man in the book of Exodus uh, 31. His name was Bezalel. And Bezalel was commissioned with building all the stuff in the tabernacle. He was the designer, the engineer. He was the builder of all these different things from the Ark of the Covenant to you know, many different things. And he just knew how to do it. There was no uh, document sent in a PDF file. There was no blueprints. He just knew how to do what God wanted and how to do it right. And the Bible says that he was filled with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, intelligence, and skill, and knowledge how to, of crafts. Amen. And so God, through the Spirit, can give you know-how. So you may be, we may be in uncharted water, but through the Spirit of God, we know how to handle these things. Amen. That's the heritage of the children of the Lord and the spirit of God on us. And number seven, the fear of the Lord, which is integrity. During this time, we're going to have integrity. And it starts with the fear of the Lord. Amen. The spirit of the Lord operates through integrity. And if you don't have integrity in your life, you don't have the spirit of the Lord working in your life. So I encourage you, let the spirit of integrity to work through you. Amen. Through the fear of the Lord. And making right choices, loving people, encouraging them, you're gonna be okay. And so let the Spirit of God right now relax you. Just take a deep breath. Let the peace of God that passes understanding come on you and let it relax you. This time and this season might be tragic for the world, but for the children of God, <laughs> like at the Passover when they put the blood of the Lamb over the doorpost, it was a season of peace for them. Let it be a season of peace for us. And so remember, just recapping, that we're going to have an online experience uh, this Sunday at home. We're not going to meet together. We're going to have worship. We're going to have the preaching of the word. It's going to be on Facebook. 
It's going to be on Instagram. It's going to be on YouTube and on at AliveChurch.tv. And so share it with your friends. Amen. Hey, have a great night. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brothers and sisters right now that if they're if fearful, God, I pray right now that that fear would stop. Peace, be still in this storm in the name of Jesus. We take authority and ask your blessing and your provision in the spirit of healing upon my brothers and sisters. God, let us draw closer together during this time, not further apart, but closer together. Let our families grow closer together in the name of Jesus. Lord, let this be a season of blessing. I pray, this is supernatural. I pray supernaturally that you bless my brothers and sisters watching this. And Lord, we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching. Love you guys very, very much. Let's have a great week.